teach them manners, who's going to teach them manners? Who? Exactly. You see, they say four things that affect any human being. Four things. Home, school, environment, uh, sorry, media, environment. Isn't that true? They family, or, or uh, you know, family, home, school. So if the home does not do the job, the school will do some. And if the school doesn't do it, media, and the media not, then who else? The environment, and we're going to be very harsh. So make sure that you teach your children manners and take them with you. And be, of course, there's, everyone has a lecture to it. Um, this seminar actually lasts about two days, two to three days. But again, I mean, because of the time right now. And I promise you, I'll finish with this. The third one is what? Be his sahib, be his friend from 14 till about 21. What's happened at 14? Anybody knows? You know, burning. <laughs> the kids are burning, man. Right? You know, you're in the school. Oh, you know, today this girl sat next to me in that first grade. Then the grades? Come on here, lady. Let's talk. What's your name? Yeah, they come home. Ah, they want to give you a hug. Yeah, things are changing. Hormones are kicking. These kids, man, these boys become boys. Voice changes, beard growing. Woman changing. Became woman. Not any more girls. You know? So you think, how am I going to deal with this? My son comes home, he's 14 years old, he wants to hug his mom. And if I'm going to get away from me, man, you beard and everything else, you smell and all that, of course you smell. These are hormones stop working. <laughs> you know, the odorants stop working. And I told my wife, I said, look, if he doesn't hug you, he'll find someone else to hug. If I don't hug him, he'll find somebody else to hug. Every child needs at least 24 hugs a day. Can you believe that? 24 hugs. They say four for assurance, you know, A, for maintenance, and the rest is for to grow. Make them grow. Imagine, imagine how many hugs. The Prophet when he was sitting with the Hassan Hussein, he was kissing them, and a man entered and he looked at him and he said, You kiss your children? What's wrong with you? He said, I have ten children. I never kissed one of them. So the Prophet said, Ma what should I do with a man that Allah have took out mercy out of him? If you are not merciful, Allah will never be merciful with you. Be merciful with those on the earth, Allah will forgive you and be merciful with you from heaven. So yes, and be their friend. He said, how can, how can I be their friend? How can I be their friend? I mean, uh, he's my kid. Yeah, he can be your friend. Yes, yes, there's respect. The respect's still there. I discuss and I tell my children, look man, whatever it is, how bad it is, I don't care. Tell me first. We'll deal with the issue. Never ever punish your child because of their behavior. Separate the behavior from the human being that you have in your home. They need a friend. They need to feel that they can trust you. They can tell you things. Because at that age, they are changing physically, psychology, everything else. And they need support. If you, if you don't give them support, they will find their support somewhere else. And that would be really, really bad. Two weeks ago, Sheikh Yasser Al-Qadi did a lecture. You know, he's in Dallas. So he spoke about two parents. The parents came to him and they told him, um, we don't know what to do, but our daughter graduated from college and she went to start working and now she wants to get married to her Kaleem, who is not Muslim. What should we do? 
He said, what can you do? Can you do anything? Well, we talked to her, but she said she's firm about this. She's going to marry him. He said, well, you listen to me, tell you that this is halal. No, it is not halal. Her marriage is not valid. And her life is zina. And her children are not Yeah, but compared to who? No, he refused. Oh no, I'm telling you, and you can listen to the lecture by the way. It's, it's on YouTube. He refused. He said, no. Why should I change my religion? But then the father said, where did I go wrong? Well, somewhere down the line. Well, where were you when she was seven or eight or nine? We take things for granted. We say, you know what? My child is good. They behave right. They come. She's hijabi. Or she like you know, or she prays, or she's this, and she's that. Where were you in her life? So he mentioned that story to tell us that we did something wrong. But the final thing I want to say: if anything like that happened, okay, be like Nuh alayhi salam. Never ever. When a brother had this issue. And I said, what did you do? He said, I kicked her out. I said, Jazakallah khair. Now you throw her at the shaitan. He said, what should I do? I said, what should she do your daughter? I said, look, no alayhi salam for seven or nine hundred years, fighting with his child. And his child told him, I will never believe in you. But even when he was in the ship, when the ship was going into this big, huge waves, what did he tell his son? Anybody knows? Ya Bunayya Rukam Na'ana Wa La Takum Ma'al Kafirin My son, look, Ya Bunayya He didn't say, you! You! Kafir Anta You! You know, Ya Bunayya My son, my beloved son, just jump into the ship. Although Allah told him, no man non-Muslim, non-unbeliever should be in this ship. Even with that, he said, Ya Bunayya Rukam Na'ana, just jump in. Jump, let's talk. Never ever leave that, that thread between you and your children, no matter what. No matter what. Keep that. And I know I'm not in your shoes. I'm not in their shoes. I am not. May Allah Ta'ala ta save me and you from this situation. But even with that, no alayhi salam did not give up till the last minute. To the point that when the waves came between them and Allah was so merciful not to show Noah the death of his son. But even with that, after this, Allah Ya Rabbi Ya Allah, you promised me you're gonna save my family. He is my son. He told him, no, not now. Khalas. But do we cut that relationship? Never ever learn this. So what do we need to do today? We go home. And we start dealing with our children like human beings. We talk to them. We find out. Your children are saying, Baba, you're, you're weird today. What's wrong with you? No, we just heard that this, you know, we just heard Brother Sheikh Muda was talking about the you know, And I need to establish this relationship again with you. I need to know you more. Maybe I was wrong. Well, I told my kids this. I said, Baba, look, you know, I don't know if you remember this and that. I, I really regret what I did. I said, Baba, please don't say that. You know, we love you. I said, I understand. But I want you to know before I die that these things were wrong and I don't want you to take that you know, against me or to do it unto to your children. And today I see my children, alhamdulillah, more educated, more loving to their children, more attending to their children, alhamdulillah. So this is exactly what we need to do. We need to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never ever, ya khwana, forget to pray to your children. Never ever. Every time we call our mom, they used to say, Allah, I just pray for you. I was just praying for you. We forget to pray for our children. Pray for your children. Pray for them. Allah, Allah, pray for them. Keep praying for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us, Ya Rabbi Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us for the best of this deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to be the good example for our children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our children from the shirk, from, from, from any harm, from any evil. You know, and, and for the children, you know, please, you know, give your parents a break. And the second thing is, be open with them. Talk to them. It's 
it's okay. Talk to them in a respectful way, even if they do something wrong. Yeah, parents do something wrong. Their parents are not perfect, by the way. But talk to them, it's okay. Tell them, Baba, I, I, I need to talk to you about this. I'm serious about that, and I need you to listen to me. And we need to listen to our children. We need to listen to them. We need to really, uh, I mean, subhanAllah. When, when, uh, when I saw a sister, we were in, uh, we were in prison, and we were doing from raising for making mad. And this sister came and she gave a thousand dollars, and she cried. And I said, what's wrong? Are you okay? She said, my son got shot last night. 13, 18, 18 or 19 years old. He said, I wish he was away, he was alive today. I would have given all my money, not only a thousand. So brothers and sisters, cherish these moments with your children. Really celebrate these moments. Even when you get upset with your children, celebrate these moments. Celebrate these, their lives with, with, with you. You know? I mean, I mean, inshallah. I mean, please forgive me. I know uh, I tried to make it short, but the mother said, yeah, it's not okay. That's okay. And uh, please blame me, blame me. Blame me for it, inshallah. But uh, I know that it is really, really extremely important. It's really important, inshallah. don't get tired from the Alhamdulillah. So please, but don't forget when you are leaving again, we are collecting for Afghanistan. You know, a lot of people are hurt. SubhanAllah, a lot of people are dead. Families are gone completely, completely vanished because of the earthquake. And also they're doing qurbanis. So whatever you can, inshallah, spare when you are leaving. Please stop by the table, take a pitch card, and help inshallah. But if you have time to go and eat. Yeah, bismillah.